Hey guys, um, it's been a, about three weeks since my last posting, and uh, do I have a story for you today? But first, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time together, and I thank you for your healing power in my life, God. Um, let this story be of, um, be of goodness to somebody, let it help somebody, let it restore somebody's faith in you. Lord God, let my journey uh, um, help somebody. Uh, speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, again for your healing power, and thank you for the lessons you've taught me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, those of you who watched me for years know that I I rarely tell personal stories. I insert some personal stories into my sermons to illustrate a point, but usually I don't spend the sermon time telling a personal story. I may interject something here and there, um, but usually it's usually about what God has told me or something um, that I'm learning, but it's not a personal story or something that he's told me to tell you or whatever. Um, I rarely use text of scripture because um, although the word is really important to me, I understand that the, that the YouTube audience that I'm speaking to is not all Christian, so I don't want to get them bogged down in like Matthew chapter this or uh, chapter six of that. Um, I really want the word to come alive into the into uh, someone's own life, and not that what I do is less important. I just have uh, different means of doing it than most preachers. Um, I've been away for the past almost month, almost like three weeks. Um, it started on the, on the Monday after my last post. Um, I, I had, looking back, I think it actually started on the, on the Sunday. Um, I had a bit of a scratchy throat, but on the Sunday I thought it was just from preaching because usually I get up and I do my morning routine and then I start uh, preaching and then usually I have um, a kind of a scratchy throat because talking is straight for uh, 30 or 40 minutes will do that to you. So I remember feeling a bit of a scratchy throat, thinking that it was not unusual. Okay, but I woke up on Monday morning and I still had the scratchy throat. And you, you know when you, when you know deep inside that something's wrong, but you try to be ignore it. So this time I excused it as allergies and I thought, oh my gosh, my allergies are, are really acting up. And um, I said, okay, those are my allergies because I don't have bad allergies, but, but um, sometimes I do have allergies and sometimes it can, it can affect the throat. But one of the girls that, 
that um, works with me said, uh, let's take, um, he, she said, I don't like the way your voice is sounding because I was kind of hoarse and whatever. She's like, I don't like the way your voice is sounding because her daughter had COVID and that was the way her daughter's voice was sounding. So, um, so she said, just let's take a, a rapid test and just make sure. And I was still, still sure it was allergies. Um, was my allergies acting up? I took a rapid test. Um, it turned out it was positive for COVID. And I was like, I got COVID? And I was so shocked. The Friday before, I had been at some place uh, for my computer assessment because it's time for me to get a new computer. So I had been someplace for my computer assessment. I cannot be sure, but I think at that place is where I got it. And I just found out this morning that at that place where I was for the day getting the computer assessment, there had been an outbreak of uh, COVID there. So, so I found out that I had COVID. And for the first few days, I was, I had a scratchy throat. Um, I started coughing and sneezing and just feeling like I had a really bad cold. But the one thing was, um, I kept throwing up the three nights I was home. Um, after I got diagnosed with COVID, I kept uh, throwing up and throwing up and th throwing up, not th throwing up food, but throwing up phlegm. Um, like that clear stuff, um, I kept on throwing up and thro th throwing up, and finally, um, uh, on Wednesday, I got diagnosed, diagnosed through the rapid test on the Monday, and then on the Wednesday night, I felt so awful and I kept coughing and coughing and coughing and that early Wednesday morning I threw up a threw up phlegm again and uh, and then when one of the um, the lady on the night shift came she said you know what we need to get you down to the hospital because um, there could be something else wrong, so I was rushed to, uh, the hospital, and, yep, they confirmed it, I had COVID-19, the, um, Omicron variant, um, through a PCR test, so at that point, uh, the doctors were wanting to, okay, she has COVID, so let's send her home and she could get well. And this is really important. Uh, for anybody with a disability there who is listening to me and gets diagnosed with COVID and needs care, um, at the hospital when they when they uh, wanted to send me home, I had to advocate and say, 
no, I can't go home because I live in my own apartment and all, all the people are there to help me. I will not get the attention I need to get healed from, to uh, get over this. And they can't monitor me in the way that they need to with COVID. In my regular life, I could do it. Once I'm up, I'm okay. I don't need anything. But with COVID, sometimes you need constant monitoring. And because of my disability, because I need care, I needed to stay there. So finally, um, the doctor spoke to the social worker and the, no, finally, the social worker spoke to me and, um, and said, okay, we'll keep you. And I remember from the hospital, I kept throw, throwing up phlegm and throwing up phlegm and throwing up phlegm, up phlegm like I did at home. They tried to give me uh, Zofrem, which is a, which is an anti-nausea medication, but it didn't work. And then they tried to give me gravel. But, but uh, they must have given me too much or something went on with me in the gravel. Um, it slowed down my speech and it really just made me feel awful. I felt like I was uh, having a stroke and, and they, I wasn't, I was okay, but the gravel just um, really made me feel awful, not drowsy like it's supposed to, but it slowed down my reflexes and def defensive, so they they gave me gravel, and um, then, then after, like, I think about five, five or six hours there, it was probably Thursday morning at this time, but I was, or late Wednesday morning, because I was so out of it, I don't even remember. So, they, they finally found a room for me in the hospital. So, they took me up uh, to that room, and... I stayed in the hospital for about seven days. At this, for the first day in a bit, I was kind of, let's say, out of it. And I could, oh, one thing I forgot to say is they gave me um, steroids to try and treat the COVID. And the steroids really, because I'm diabetic, so the steroids really up my sugar. And I said, no, never, never again. So, um, so they finally, finally, after hours, uh, found a uh, permanent room for me. I was in the emergency, I was in an emergency room at that point, and I, I was, you know, had doctors coming in and out, uh, had a nurse coming in and out, and it was just really scary at that point, and, uh, I remember, you guys know me, I'm a music person, and I remember the song that, uh, that w was going in my head at that time was, Something good is happening here, in here, in here, in here, something good is happening here. Um, I think that's by uh, Jonathan Nelson, if I'm not 
wrong. Um, I was just so scared because you, you've heard of, everybody's heard of COVID. We've been dealing with it for the past two years. And, but I didn't know how severe it was. I didn't have any problem with my breathing or anything like that. Um, but I was really just scared, and you know fear can do more harm than anything physical, so I was really scared, and, um, but I, but I, but that song kept on going in my head, so the good is happening here, and then I, I went into a private room, uh, at the hospital where I stayed for like uh, seven days and it's funny within all this as as horrible and as scary as COVID was to have um, it was also a learning experience because the people I met the PSWs that fed me, most of them at Toronto in general were wonderful. Like they were just really caring. And I had a nurse. Uh, I'm going to shout her out. Her name was Cooper. She was just so, she was just phenomenal. Really caring and really funny and really talked to me like a person. And one thing I learned about COVID is is that when you have COVID, it's extremely isolating. You're physically sick, yes, and that is awful, but it is physically isolating. And sometimes, because um, you need to be in isolation to be safe, but they don't tell you about the emotional isolation that you feel is very lonely and very scary and very uh, kind of tough. But through all that, God was still working. It was just amazing uh, the ways in which God was working well after and I'll, I have to tell you of a funny symptom that that I think COVID gave me. Um, I, I couldn't go number two for a week. It's, it like it, it. I heard of diarrhea being a symptom of COVID, but I never heard of constipation being a symptom of COVID. Uh, so. I was constipated for about a week. I was eating and eating and eating by that point, but nothing was coming out. Finally, uh, uh, by the persistence of Cooper, I went to the bathroom. So they, after that, they transferred me to um, a um, recovery facility because although I wasn't seriously sick enough to stay in the hospital, I wasn't strong enough to come home. So they transferred me uh, to, a, to a recovery facility and I stayed there for about two and a half weeks. And all I, all I basically did there was watch Netflix and YouTube and um, in, the, in the hospital room there was no TV, no nothing and I don't have a cell phone or anything so I was basically bored for seven days there but when I got to the uh, other facility, the recovery the recovery facility, I had Netflix. I never watched so much Netflix in my life. 
I saw Bridgerton. I saw Greenleaf. I saw Sweet Magnolias. I saw the Ultimatum, which is a reality show. Uh, I saw. Um, I'm at the end of Dynasty. Um, and I saw a movie called The Adam Project. So basically, I spent three weeks, uh, almost uh, two weeks, uh, two and a half weeks, somewhere around there, uh, recuperating from COVID. And um, they fed me. They changed me. They they did all that stuff, and and the care was awesome. And I, but there was a night, and God is so interesting because um, at Grace there was Netflix and YouTube, and the church that I attended that I attend online here, they have a strong YouTube presence there. All their services are on YouTube and all that stuff. So I still got to uh, watch the sermons. Well, I didn't get up early enough to attend church, to, uh, to like, do the church, uh, whole church or things, or quite honestly, they run all day, but I guess I didn't feel like it at that point, I just felt like, um, benching out and, like, kind of being a heathen for a few weeks, so I didn't watch the whole service, but I did see the sermons, and somehow in your dark what I want to say to you is, in your darkest moments, in the moments that you're so low, God will find a way to find you in the in the lowest places, and He will find a ray of light to lift you up. And I remember one one uh, one particular sermon that was preached when I was um, in the recovery facility it was uh, it was last like it was last week um, that really drove me to be honest with God about all my frustrations where where he was concerned and what where, where I felt let down, it was really healing for me. And after that, I just poured everything up to the Lord, all my frustrations and everything, and it was so healing. So God finds you at whatever space and whatever place you are, and he, he will come down to whatever place you are and get you. Uh, you don't have to find him, he finds you, and what I, what, what I learned from having COVID and being laid up for almost a month was how much I am loved, because when you go through, uh, when you go through your daily life, you really you're like, oh yeah, they love me, they love me. But the outpouring of love and support that I got from uh, the ladies at my home, like, everyone was like, I'm so glad to see you back. Everyone was like, I'm scared for you, or whatever. I was scared for you, we were praying for you. And the outpouring of love and support was so wonderful and so meaningful and so beyond anything um, I could ever imagine. And even from my family, 
Um, my sister paid my Rogers bill, and my mom called uh, the 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 recovery facility every day. And my other sister got me clothes to wear home. It just the love and support made me realize how loved I actually am, and that's the main, that as horrible and as awful as this experience was, um, that's the main thing that God taught me, how much I'm loved by Him and those around me, and how much I am supported, and how much I mean to everybody in it, in it was really touched my heart. Um, I, so guys, I'm, I'm thankful that you listened to my, uh, story of having COVID and you can share this with anyone that you want to, that you want to share it with. And I, I hope it will encourage anyone not, not to be afraid um, if they get diagnosed. And it, ha it happened to me. Um, and I was afraid at the same. I was afraid. I was afraid, but God brought me through. And it's the goodness and grace of of God and wonderful people that he surrounded me with, um, both at home and at the hospital and at the recovery center that I went, that got me through. And my family was absolutely wonderful and, and the ladies here at home have been absolutely wonderful and the ladies there. Uh, were mostly wonderful. I, I I did bump into some characters, but we won't get into that here. Um, so I hope my story encouraged you that whatever you're facing, God finds you and he brings the people that you need and the structure that you need in the circumstances that you need at that time to get through what you need to get through. He never leaves you without a door. He never leaves you without something to use. And he will teach you things through whatever circumstance you're going through. And look for the lessons. Look for the lessons in life. Because, um, like when you're when you're down and when you're doing all that stuff, sometimes it's, it's easy to get mired and mucked in self pity. But there are lessons that you need to learn. So whatever you're going through in your life right now, ask this question: What lessons do I need to learn from this? What tools can I take away from this? The main thing that I took away from COVID is that I'm loved and I'm not alone. Um, and those are the phenomenal things that I learned going through this experience. Bye guys. See you later. I love you so much. And remember to share this one, especially this one. Uh, with at least one person. Let's encourage each other by, by my story. And I just want to thank you for just being there and your support and watching these videos and commenting. It's really awesome. And share this one with at least one person so I can encourage them. So, Someone, you may know someone that's struggling with COVID that may find encouragement from this story. Bye, guys.
So what are you withholding, beloved, that you need to confront? What have you been running from that you need to confront and deal with? Because there's only so long that you can run before it catches up with you. You need to confront whatever pain, whatever unpleasantness, and deal with it. And know that there's life and light on the other side of whatever you're going to. And know that your experience can heal someone. Father, I thank you for this time to, today, and I thank you for this experience that you've brought me through because it was unpleasant, but the lessons that you taught me in it I will take uh, throughout my lifetime, and this video will hopefully help somebody. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Bye. Oh, and be thankful for the people around you. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you appreciate them. Tell them that you care about them. Because quite often when we're in our regular lives, we forget to do that. And, or we do that with meaningless I love yous. But let them know how much you appreciate them. That's another thing I learned too. I'll see you guys later. Bye. I'm stronger than yesterday. Now it's nothing but my way. COVID did not kill me. No, no. I am stronger. I'm calling this um, st story sermon stronger. Bye, guys.